Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing eight lens adapters to find out if lens adapters have an effect on image quality and which brands in particular are ones you might want to avoid. Yeah, yeah. Last month, I compared 10 50 millimeter vintage lenses that can be bought for under $100 US dollars with the intent to discover which would work best for my own needs. And I was so sure of myself and my methods, but then I saw this comment from someone on Petapixel, Dean, and it really gave me pause. I hadn't considered that a cheap lens adapter could have a noticeable effect on image quality that the lenses produced. And if that's true, then yes, that certainly brings into question any conclusions I made about sharpness in that video. So I've decided to apply a bit of science to the question. The purpose of this video is to test eight different basic lens adapters, all from different brands, but using the same lens and see if we can determine if the brand of lens adapter will have any measurable effect on image quality. Now, please keep in mind that in this video, I'm only testing conversion adapters with vintage lenses. None of these adapters provide speed boosting, autofocus, and only one of them adds aperture capability for modern lenses. But if you came for that sort of information, all is not lost. I am working on a video comparing both speed boosted and a few adapters that bring auto focus capability specifically for Fuji. Sorry other brand users. So when that video is done, hopefully soon, you will find a link to it above or in the video description. So what we'll be testing today though is, as I said, eight conversion adapters which take the Nikon F or G mount and adapt them to the Fuji X mount. For you full frame brow beaters, you're welcome to complain in the comments if you find it upsetting that I'm testing on APS-C devices, but please keep in mind the question I'm answering today has very little to do with having a full frame camera, and since I shoot mostly Fuji and love vintage Nikon lenses, that's what I'll be using to test. So with that in mind, I'll now introduce you to the adapters that we have on hand here and the current price I was able to purchase them for in US dollars will go from the cheapest to the most expensive. First up, we have two lenses I got off eBay. Um, these are generic, they are no-name brands. I'll link to them below in case you decide you want them in your life. Um, but there's a black one, it has a black lens base, base of the lens plate, I don't know what you call that. And the other one has a silver one. So the black one was only $7.83 US dollars. The silver was $11.89. And then moving up, we've got the Photosee adapter. Um, this one was pretty cheap at $13.29. Then we get a little bit more fancy with the Gutty or Goody adapter. This has got a rubber ring and we'll come back to it, but some, a little bit of a weather sealing gasket. This one comes in at $18.99. Next we have the Photodiox adapter. Very simple, more expensive though than the Goody at $19.95. Then we get to the Gobi. I think it's Gobi, Go or Gobi adapter. This is actually identical to the KNF adapter. I believe that this is just a rebrand of the KNF, so um, it's going to be the same. KNF is probably a more popular brand name than Gobi, though, but either way, like I said, same lens or same adapter, $24.20 US. Next, we have the Kipon or Kipon, Kipon, I don't know how to pronounce these. Um, this one is quite a bit more expensive at $61.54. And then lastly, we have the much more expensive Metabones adapter. Keep in mind this also has an aperture adjustment dial ring though, where the others do not. And the only reason I decided to go with this was because Metabones doesn't make one from Nikon to Fuji without the adapter ring. Otherwise I would have just bought that one. Some of these other ones, like I know KNF makes one with an aperture ring, but um, I, I, I don't care about the aperture ring personally because I use Nikon F, um, but I did want to include Metabones in the review because they are considered the, the high-end um, adapter brand. Now let's look briefly at build quality. For the most part, you don't buy an adapter for its build quality and there isn't a substantial difference here. For the most part, most of these are just a hunk of metal that provides some distance between your vintage lens and your camera. But there are a few idiosyncrasies that I think are worth pointing out. Ideally, your adapter would fit nice and snugly, not too snugly, but snug enough to not allow for any play between the adapter and the camera body. 
and the adapter in the lens. And for the most part, all of these lenses fit my lens and body nice and snugly. The worst exception here was the generic silver adapter, which had more play than I'd like to see. And surprisingly, the Metabones adapter, um, but I think I could live with it. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I'm not really sure why some of these go for this little circle style latch release. It's not super comfortable to use or appealing in my mind. Um, the lever style feels and looks better, but I don't think that should factor into a buying decision. I just thought it was worth mentioning. The Meta Bones really has the best latch release here of all of them, in my opinion. The machining on most or all of these seems sound. The exception here was my Photosy adapter, which um, has some, it was a little rough in some areas, didn't inspire a lot of confidence. The Goody adapter tries to set itself apart by having a completely unnecessary rubber ring around the exterior, but on the positive side, it does have a rubber gasket also for that extra measure of weather resistance, and that's a nice touch. It makes me think that maybe if all other things were equal, I would choose the Goody adapter for maybe that feature alone. The Metabones adapter is definitely a bit of an outlier in other ways. It has the clickless aperture ring built in, like I mentioned. Um, so that adds a bit of weight and might be unnecessary if you, like me, only shoot with vintage glass. The weight does differ and you can see how they differ here. If all things were equal, I personally would love to add as little weight to my overall kit weight as possible and I would choose the Kipon as it is light as a feather. Unfortunately though, and this is a spoiler alert, all other things are not equal with these adapters. So let's get into that and that is the most important question that we'll deal with. How do these adapters affect image quality for specifically the Nikkor 50mm 1.4 AIS, which you may recall I recently found to be my favorite cheap vintage lens. Even by modern standards, it is very sharp, has no unusual image quality issues other than some higher than what I'm used to level of, of color fringing, which that's to be expected though for a lens of this vintage but I think it will serve nicely as a test subject. Now I'm far from a lens expert, but I believe that there are only really two things that could be affected by an imprecise lens adapter. And first, if the total flange distance is off, um, that will affect two things. The first thing is that it'll affect the lens, the markings of the lens distance, the distance markings, and also the hyperfocal distance um, or infinity when you hit infinity will change. And the second potential issue is if these adapters are inconsistent with the width from side to side or the degree to which the adapter is askew, it would lead to some softness at the sides of the image, similar to what you might get with a shift lens, um, only not on purpose. A lens adapter should not introduce shifting into an image. So to understand how these adapters do in relation to those two questions, we do have to get a bit technical, nothing too crazy. Basically, the film era Nikon flange focal distance or the distance between the film plane and um, the base of the lens needs to be 46.5, or it is 46.5 millimeters. Fuji's flange focal distance is only 17.7 millimeters. Again, that's the distance between the sensor and the base of the lens mount. Um, so if the adapter on the Fuji X device is gonna give the proper flange distance it, um, that the Nikkor lens was designed for, this guy, it, the, the mount or the, the adapter needs to be precisely 28.8 millimeters. But as long as the width of that adapter is consistent all the way around, um, really it doesn't have to be exactly 28.8 millimeters to achieve optimal sharpness because with mirrorless cameras, you, what you see is what you get with focus. If the flange focal distance is off by a bit, no biggie, just change the focus to adapt. There would only really be two small losses. One, the focal distance markings on the lens would be rendered inaccurate, and two, it messes with the hyperfocal value of the lens. If the adapter is too short, infinity focus will be achieved sooner than what um, the lens shows. 
but if the adapter is too long, we will be unable to achieve infinity focus with this lens at all. As you'll see a bit later, there's no real way to get around the markings and hyperfocal distance issues. But I'm guessing for 99% of you, that really isn't a big deal unless you do astrophotography where you rely on getting to infinity focus in the dark. Um, by feel or if you shoot a lot of landscape photography and you rely on infinity focus rather than focus stacking Otherwise, you'll probably never notice this as an issue if the adapter does not give you the perfect focal flange focal distance uh, A much bigger issue for you will be if the lens is askew um, That will mess with the sharpness of your images So I tested both of those things and to do that because I'm a perfectionist and because having a YouTube channel was not a smart financial investment I purchased a really, really expensive, but extremely accurate caliper. So we'll look at how true the adapters are first. And to test that, I just measured um, the distance, or I guess the, the width, overall width of each lens all the way around. And I got the widest point and the narrowest point. And obviously I subtracted the two to find which of these lenses had the biggest difference and which was, well, anyway, a continuum. And you can see that chart now. So here you can see I've ordered them from most true, quote unquote. I'm sure the geometry experts out there will give me a better term. Worst performer here was the photodiox adapter and we can see that there was a 0.2 millimeter distance difference from one side of the adapter versus the other. So now that we've identified the worst performer, the photodiox again, let's take it and compare it to the best surprisingly the most true adapter and that was the photosee adapter and we'll compare those against each other using again this lens the 50 millimeter 1.4 and see if we can detect any sharpness difference to really get in and compare things and make the differences as extreme as possible i tested the corners specifically so with perfectly parallel with the subject and at the aperture of 1.4, I took four shots with both adapters, one on each corner in critical focus. I then compared them blindly in Lightroom, not aware which adapter was which, by studying the three corners which were not the ones which were in critical focus. Um, what I found was really surprising. I honestly expected there to be no differences that my eye would be able to detect, but that was not the case. You can easily see that in all cases, the non-critical sharp corner was sharper with the photosee adapter. And in the most extreme case, when we critical focus on the bottom right corner of the subject, you can see that the image taken with the photodiox adapter is significantly less sharp than the image taken with the photosee adapter. But wait, 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 hold the phone, Andrew. I can hear the grumbling masses saying, we shoot vintage lenses because we like the vintage look. We don't do it because we need critical sharpness. And yeah, for a lot of you, this stuff matters very little at all. There should be no difference in the center sharpness for you because with mirrorless, what you see is what you get. It will only be the corners that you might take a small sharpness hit if you use an imprecise adapter, the corners or the edges. But for me, someone who wants to compare lenses and find the absolute best in any given category, it absolutely does matter. I need to make sure the adapters I use are giving me the sharpest focus a lens is capable of and not messing with my testing results. And what I have learned here leads me to agree with Dean. I have to throw away my sharpness comparisons from my 50 millimeter vintage lens tests because I can't be confident that the adapters were consistent and true. Bummer. But also kind of cool that I learned that and I can share it with you. In short, we can conclude that yes, the adapter quality does matter if optimal lens sharpness is important to you. But before you go out and buy only Photosee adapters, um, keep in mind we need more data. What we've done here only tested one adapter. Was it a fluke that this one just happened to be more true than the other adapters? Would Metabones be more consistent? It's a brand name that I trust. Kipon also, I mean it did very well in these testings. Is it a more reliable brand? Not positive. So even though we can't say definitively that the more true adapters that I tested here will always be this true, what we can probably say is that you may want to avoid buying Mr. Photodiox as it clearly is more askew than the others in a non-insignificant way. And maybe you might want to avoid the generic brands and maybe even K&F 
or Gobi, um, as they weren't red hot either. So for most of you, that satisfies your big question. But we do wanna answer the other part of that initial question relating to focus infinity and see how things are affected when we have adapters of different lengths. For this test, we'll again grab our adapters at the extreme. The closest to 28.8 millimeters was actually the silver generic adapter. To really test hyperfocal distance slash infinity focus though, we would want to measure out the, and test the near limit of the hyperfocal distance. But for this, we'll just look at what we get at f11 with both adapters um, on, a, on a generic scene. In this first shot, we're looking at a scene through the generic adapter that had the closest to 28.8 distance with a lens set to infinity. We can see here that things aren't particularly sharp, but just a tiny bump to the right infinity focus and we see things sharpen up. So we see that even the closest adapter we have to 28.8 overshoots infinity focus just a bit. But even if we look at the Metabones adapter with a difference of only 0.245 millimeters, it is significantly worse when the lens is set to infinity. Now I wouldn't read too much into this. I think the best conclusion we can make here is that most lens adapters are gonna be shy of their ideal length so that infinity focus can be achieved even with heat and cold expanding and, and whatnot. But likely none of them will allow for infinity focus by referring to the lens markings ever. Instead, you'll be better off determining that with focus peaking or if you're an astrophotographer, um, figure out what infinity is before you go into the field, tape your lens down. If these adapters allowed you to go just a smidge past infinity focus, they are in good company. Many Fuji lenses that have clutch focus also allow for focusing past the infinity marking. Um, I'm told that this is to allow for thermal expansion or when shooting infrared, but I don't know much about that. Anyway, that includes my analysis, and as far as the decisions on what to keep, I'm actually going to keep two of these adapters. The PhotoC adapter for when I don't want to compromise on sharpness for things like testing vintage lenses or vintage lens landscape photography, and actually the Goody or Gutty adapter because I really like that little, that little, uh, weather sealing element. Of course, I'm not gonna take this out in the rain. That would, that would be ridiculous. But I do like that extra measure of protection for dust. Uh, it's just a nice little touch. So those are the two that I probably use. As for the rest of these adapters, they're all headed to the eBay bin. But that's all for now, guys. I really hope you found something here helpful or interesting. Remember, kindness before cameras. We'll talk to you again real soon.